you know, we see Andy Kenny has a, a secret list of, of Fine Gael candidates. Yeah. Do you have a, does Mihal have a secret list? I was stuck. <laughs> Why would you keep a list like that secret <laughs> if they're meant to be candidates that you want to get elected? Yeah. I thought that was one of the more bizarre aspects of that story. Yeah. Um, but, but we I mean, have, I, 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 it's not a secret, I mean, yeah. people like um, uh, Avril Parr, Senator Avril Parr, Councillor Deidre Heaney in Dublin, mm. uh, in one constituency, yeah. Catherine Arda in Dublin South Central, in Don Leary we have a very strong team of women in, 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 in Jennifer Cuff and Kate Feeney and Mary Hannafin. Down around the country, then you're looking at Margaret Murphy O'Mani in West Cork, mm. uh, Norma Moriarty in Kerry, Lisa Chambers in Mayo, um, and um, we well, got to get them elected. Though, uh, well, the, well the, 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 I mean, first of all, we we hope all of those will contest to the conventions yeah. and go for them. I think the majority of them will go for it. Obviously, we, we we have tight tickets in terms of the number of candidates we'll be running in different constituencies. Yeah. We'll have to have 30% of our candidates have to be women, yeah. and I welcome that. Would you like to and exceed that target, maybe? I would like to, yeah, yeah. but it's going to be challenging uh, because of the fact that, um, say, in three seaters or in four seaters, you know, in some cases you'll be running one candidate. Yeah. Um, so. Makes it particularly challenging. We have a national constituency committee. It's chaired by Michael Moynihan, uh, and they will be uh, working with organisations across the country. But we appointed Ivan uh, Galligan in terms of the Markovic Commission. It has made recommendations to us, and we'll be publishing that early in January. The key issue is the culture within the party has to change, and notwithstanding the challenges, people have to accept uh, that we're going to have to make space and room for women candidates in the next general election. I think it'll be good for the party, yeah. and I think it'll make sure that we have a broader diversity of opinion. Yeah. You know, we had strong women in the past, Margaret Gagan Quinn, a very effective legislator in her day, Mary O'Rourke as well. The macho culture. <coughs> and I, I think there's a problem with politics in general, to be honest. I, I for example, um, in, in some cases where women have said to us, you know, the, the lifestyle and the doyle is not um, amenable to, to family life, for example. Quite a number of candidates have said that to us, or prospective candidates. Uh, and whereas they would be active in local politics and, and would be councillors, the idea of the 12 o'clock sittings uh, late at night and all of that, and the way the, the, the thing is organised, is, 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 is not persuasive for people, to put it that way. But, but in Freena Fall in particular, like you said, the culture has to change in the well, what I, mean by, what I mean by that is that the, 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 in any change situation, you, you, culture has to change as well. And basically the idea that it's only my constituency matters and it's somebody else's problem to worry about can, isn't sustainable. And what will happen is, and many organizations will be saying, we understand what you have to do nationally, but meanwhile in my constituency we want it this way. And I'm afraid that, that luxury doesn't exist. Okay.